Let's begin to appreciate His holy name for the gift of life. Begin to bring your hands to your maker. Is there one more job? The King of Glory, the King of Kings. There's the Prince of Peace. Why not the Father who bless you, Jesus? Begin to worship Him. Begin to worship Him.
uh, phrases in that scripture. It says, what I press on. Paul said, what I press on. It doesn't matter what is happening. I do what I press on. That I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. When was the last time you and I asked the Lord Jesus, why, for what reason have you laid hold of me? Brethren, this morning I want us to go to God and say, Father, the reason for which you laid hold of me, let it manifest in the mighty name of Jesus. The power of God is here this morning to make it manifest. Father, the reason for which Jesus laid hold of me, the reason for which Jesus laid hold
said we have prayed. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. The Bible also tells us, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The Bible says Jesus Christ went about. He was doing good. Healing. He was, you know, releasing people from bondages. I want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the service of today, manifest greatly in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, God, manifest greatly in our lives. We have come to seek you. We have come to look unto you. We have not come to seek any man. Father, God, please manifest greatly in our lives today. Commit the man of God into the hands of God this morning and say, Father, Lord, you have given him a message for me. Father, release the message that my destiny is waiting for this day in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, through your son this morning, we ask that Lord, you will release the message that our destiny has been waiting for, that our destiny has been longing for in the name of Jesus and to the glory and praise of your name. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. We have asked of you, Lord, to take the stage. We know that you are here and to do exceedingly above our expectation or imagination. Father, we thank you because you will do it and your name will be glorified. Thank you, Father, because no man will glory in your presence because you alone will receive the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's time for testimony. I'd like to call my brother Ifine. Brother Ifine, okay, to come and give his testimony. Praise the Lord, Church. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for what He has done in my life and my family. God has been doing greater things in my life. But the devil has not been allowed me to come and testify. Last this last week. Because it was my baby, four year birthday. And we were planning on how to do the birthday. The devil was telling us it will not happen. On the, on the 19th of this month, my wife called me when I was at work that God four year called my baby on his body. I thought it was a little thing when I got home around 10 midnight. So my baby lying there. Tears came out of my eye. Because the only called him from Chelsea Town. And it was because he was very pampered and she was rather. That's why the only brother is the Lord before him and his leg and from his hand. So I thank God for everything God has done. But despite all those things, my baby was still running around with it, playing all over. He's not sleeping as if something happened to him. I just want to give God the glory for saving him in the Bible. Yeah. Son. Amen. Praise the Lord. I also have a testimony to the glory and praise of God. Um, when it was time, it was evident that we were going to bury my father when he died. Um, I began to receive a lot of counsel. Someone said, uh, why don't you write a list and bring it before the Lord? I said, that's a good one. I began to make a list. You know, at a point, I felt the Holy Spirit stop me that God is bigger than a list. Because I knew that if I brought that list to this altar, someone might just see it and sin against God because it would be funny. So I was coming to work one morning and I stopped right? on this same altar. I knelt there and I said to God, I said, Lord, I have never had buried any member of my family before, but now my father is dead. And I know that, you know, I know the requirements. So I said, Lord, I know we will need cows. The Bible says a thousand cattle on a thousand hills belong to you. 
give us cows. Number two, I said, I know we need money. More than what me, I can afford because I'm the last child. I have four, you know, senior siblings. And I know what it means because someone said, don't argue with them. Or whatever they say, don't say yes, yes, yes. And I say yes, yes, yes to everything. Someone said, take a bottle of water with you all the time. So that when they say anything that will make you upset, just drink water. But the student has said that, so you know, and I always held a bottle of water. It helped really. So, that's, I said we need money. And I said not. Apart from that, we need people know, we need support, we need people around us. Because me, I don't go to parties, I don't know who will follow me. So, God was awesome. I can tell you clearly, God did it. I don't know how it happened. All I know is that cows came, money came. My father was buried by God. I will talk with you and I will talk with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to stretch forth our hands to us. <laughs> and pray for us as I join my faith with that of my brother that we will not experience any evil in the name of Jesus. We will not experience any evil. Pray for us as we are led by the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we receive it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In our lives, sometimes it's it. we do so many things and we ignore the presence of God.
Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you because you brought us here with great expectations. My faith looks out to thee. Mighty. 
over you is coming to an end. Yeah. Every form of weakness and incapacity, incapacity, incapability that has made this mighty to want to determine what happened to you and what was going to happen. Through their actions and their words, you will see it, that this one is taking the glory and you are speechless. The Lord said, going to give you a voice. The voice of your destiny will be amplified. Yeah. And it will be louder than the voice of the mighty. Yeah. In any area, the mighty have been silencing your personal voices. And they wonder, what do you have to say? I can assure you what I have clearly. Your voice shall be amplified now. God will interpret the word I'm saying to you because that voice, I don't know what it means. There's somebody's voice that is going down shall be amplified now. Yeah. Whatever is making your voice not to be heard, be here it matters. God is going to do a shaking. Yeah. I will give you a voice. Yeah. Just is the praise, my is the victory. Satan defeated, yours is the praise. You know that song? Yours is the praise, mine is the victory. Satan defeated, yours is the praise. Withdraw him. 
It wasn't even in that place. After all, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Say no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bondage and captivity are the same. It is possible for a Christian to have demons. It is possible for somebody to be born again and be carrying demons. It is possible for someone to be a Christian and see have bondages and captivities in their life. It is possible to be talk talking and see have some aspect of your life under the oppression of the devil. It is possible to be born again and the enemy still harass some areas of your life. And every child of God must understand that it is your responsibility to enforce the authority of Christ over the challenges you are going through. Now in this place where we read, we saw a man, assuming he was 25 years old, 25 years old, and he had been sick for 38 years. 38 plus 25. 38 plus 25. 63. Imagine a man of 63 years, less, and he belonged of male, lame, blind, and the Bible said it is he's been in that condition. While I was preparing this way, the Lord said to me, some conditions that has conditioned the life of some people to a condition. All the conditions and all the things that have conditioned them is going to come to an end. Yoruba calls some things, uh, uh, condition, I don't know Yoruba, what the condition mean? But by what's the ah, condition mean? You see, the fact is that this man has been in that condition. I don't know that condition. The word condition there means bondage. This man has been in that bondage for 38 years. Now, hear me, you can be born into bondage. Exodus chapter 2. People that were not there when their grandparents entered Egypt. Subsequent generation, when they are born, they were born into what? Captivity. They were not there when their parents entered Egypt. But by the virtue of birth, here are the people of God, captivity can come by birth. The doctors nowadays realize that some sicknesses rose in the bloodline. That it is possible for your mother to have diabetes and you may suffer the diabetes if you do not. Now in abroad, some women that had no faith, when they read that their mother had cancer or their mother died of cancer, they will carry themselves to the doctor and say, I'm not waiting for that, just cut my own off. How many about something like that? Oh, so you, you guys don't know nothing. These guys are so faithless that because their mother died of cancer, they will carry themselves to the doctor and say, Doctor, I don't want to wait till that time. Cut it off now. There can be bondage by birth. There can also be bondage by marriage. For the fact that you marry into a family and you're a child of God does not exonerate you. You've got to fight yourself out. I tell you, in the family of Abraham, the moment you marry into that family, you must be married. In the family of Abraham, everybody married to that family must be married. Abraham's wife was married. Isaac's wife was married. Jacob's wife that he loved was married. Just for the fact that they married into a family. So there can be bondage by what? By birth. That can be bonded by that can be bondage in our life by association. By association. And this one has to do with mindset. It is possible to be in bondage in your mind. You can be in bondage by area you stay, by association, by neighborhood. 
You see, the area you grow up to can condition your mind to some things. That's why if you are a Jebota and you marry a Jebakis, you see, you've got to really do a lot of a lot of counseling so that some mindset that somebody had from a and you are staying in the Kui, you see, there can be a bondage. I'm not lying to you. Somebody that is born in Mushi that has a kind of a bonding in the mind ever about everything about life is struggle. Now you marry somebody that doesn't know struggle. And when this one person wants to show the one you say to see you, you are dragging me back. We must also life is so you need deliverance. There can be bondage by association, by where you grow up. And uh, there can be bondages by where you walk. Genesis 26. As long as you are walking in the area of Gera, there was famine, there was dryness. And in the midst of it, there was a divine release. And the Lord said unto Isaac, Go now down to Egypt. You can be delivered from me. Tell somebody, this condition is not my condition. <laughs> the word of God is my condition. <laughs> you see, you go to God is not my the word of God is one that condition your life. Because even in Nigeria of today, you can be in bondage because of the economy. So I have no time to talk to you about other areas. I just want to believe in other neighbor because I can talk about the country, talk about the state where you are, where you are, where, where, where you are found, like in Nigeria, where you just find yourself. You know, look at what we are facing here. It's not about choice. We just, if I have my way, I won't let go. Allow them to give back to me in, in, in uh, Nigeria. Who want to be born in Nigeria here? Yeah. You've got to give me a chance. Tell me, how many of you want to be born in Nigeria? If God has asked you where you are living here, you want to be able to make a pee. What if he, if he pretend on you? If he tell me on you, he show you pretend, he show you no way, and he show you Nigeria, and he show you Buhari, and he show you killings, and he show you. Now tell me, who will you have? You want to tell me I want to be born? <laughs> the God will not allow you to. To choose, you just find yourself just by the virtue of birth. Do you know that if you are born in Iraq, you are being a Muslim? So there can be bondage by that. Now, because I'm going somewhere and I want you to pray. Now, there's another level of bondage. I preach on this for your whole service. There can be legal and illegal bondage. Or what the Bible call lawful and unlawful captivity. I don't want to really follow me this morning so that we can pray. In the book of Isaiah chapter 49, 24 to 26, Isaiah 49, 24 to 26, the Bible asks the question Can the prey be taken from the mighty or lawful captive delivered? Who is a lawful captive? A lawful captive is somebody that has done what is bad and is serving the punishment. A lawful captive is somebody that what is suffering, he deserves it. A lawful captive is somebody that the reason why he's poor is because of what he has done. A lawful captive is somebody that the reason why he's sick is that it's a retribution, he was paid back for what he did. That is a lawful captive. That means he deserves his punishment. How many of you know that many of us are lawful captives? Because there are things we've done in the past that have sold you out. Friends, I was praying for one boy, 22 year old, the one that brought him to me, and I was telling the boy, I said, I see you in captivity, you need deliverance. The Lord told me that you have disverging some girls. And you know, you know there's a boy that he always goes for virgin to disverging. A young boy. And you wonder how the life of that boy will be tomorrow if God didn't deliver him now. Because you can't be shedding innocent blood and be free. This boy was 22. At least he has slept with not less than 12 girls. And three of them he disverging. And he was still telling me, Pastor, I don't like women. <laughs> and I told myself, so I had to ask the Lord to excuse me so that I can help him. 
When the time I told him what is writing letter to, he's writing letter to bond men that can go through bloodline and fall upon the fourth generation. Because when you despise a lady, there's an interchange of blood. And that is why some married men, some married men are married and they are despising other small small girls and they thought that their own girls will be free. You hear me? You see, there are some things you are doing or you have done in the past that you have not repented of that there is standing of all. Because the man will call that guy an accuser of the brethren. Some of you stole money and you hid it. Go and look at the story of Achan. This you did, if not the you repented, can send you out to your enemy. You can become a lawful captive. Like Satan say, I have reason to oppress you. And some of this legal captivity can come by birth. You are not actually the one that did it. But because somebody did it in your bloodline, they say all of you have done it together. I don't know you are getting me. Okay. Was it the sin that you committed that made you a sinner? As long as you are born through Adam, you are a sinner. Do you get that? Because through when Adam all of us came, Adam committed sin, and Satan took it that all of us were sinners because Adam, we were all in Adam. The same way you can be a legal or lawful captive just by the virtue of what your father did. A lawful captive is such a captive that I don't something wrong and is paying for it. But the Bible says it doesn't matter what you've done. He said, can the lawful captive be delivered? He said, the prey of the mighty. That means the one the mighty has the reason to oppress. The ability of God can set him free. Even though the devil thinks that he has reason to oppress your children, even though your husband must have done something that is selling the family out, mercy can still triumph. Even though when before you knew Jesus, you have done some things wrong and you have opened the door, the Bible said it doesn't matter. The prayer of the mighty can be delivered. I want you to search at this point. Is there any area before you are born again? Because I've seen things in my life. I've seen people that thought, you know, I don't commit sin, nothing happened to me. But I've been able to trace by the help of the Holy Spirit that this is actually come from the bloodline. There's a bloodline captivity. Just by the virtue of all your father did. So maybe your father, your father has snatched other people's wife, went to do juju and attack the man so that the man will not remember the wife again. Some of you, your father has stayed with prayer. I know a man that told me in 1989 that the only adultery you commit is with pregnant women. He doesn't lie sleep with any women except they are pregnant. What kind of is when the woman is pregnant, that the woman will be pursued to sleep with. I don't know whether he uses it for something. But can you imagine how that life will go and the life of the children? So you've got to look at this. What about some of our parents that do Ajo? If you are from this part of the world, our parents like to do Ajo. How do you know Ajo? Mommy, you don't know Ajo. You speak Yoruba small. He said, Ajo! Yoruba has a way of using it. One of the things God will forgive our people is that uh, we know how to rationalize sin. We call sin by sweet name. No, now we call fornication a fear. My crush. <laughs> Fling. One night stand. What do we call it again? So we call sin by sweet name. To do Ajo means. To go outside God, to fortify yourself, to retain your words, to protect yourself and your family. How many of you have heard Sarah here? How many of you have eaten Sarah? You have Sarah. Hey, my dear, you know what I'm doing? May the fact of begin to burn your body now. Sarah is somebody trying to abuse the devil. Maybe they say it's going to die. They now told his own. This is the secret that I do you. Share it among many people. Who are you, Mosa? How many of you know Mosa? You know? That's why I said that when you grow up in Nikoya, you grow up in Niger, in uh, is not the same thing. Nikoya and Niger cannot know what I'm saying. How many of you know Mosa? Ah, okay. Okay, how many of you have yet came here? Let's take it away. Ah, 
okay? After beating Pinky and use red boy to, to fry. That's killing me. <laughs> Do you know most of the time? People share their problem to innocent people to carry. And you wonder why some of you some of you keep on seeing yourself in the community you grew up. Maybe the thing you ate that time is what is tying you down. Is it God told me some of you have not repented sincerely and cut yourself off from some past and the accuser is still saying, yes, you are there. I told my people one day I was praying for one girl. This girl became violent, became so violent. This is girl that was my comfort. Very gentle girl and during, during the deliverance, five brother cannot hold her. You know what the devil told me? He said, you did, were there, were there, was I there when I grabbed her hand and handed her over? I had my grandmother handed her over. Her mother had her when she was around 18, 19, around 19. She was in high institution. And then they know that the father was dating the woman. But they didn't expect them to have done what they did. So the family of the husband went and they told them that we are supposed to marry her. But the parents said, no, she must go back to, to school. So they gave the baby to the mother of the woman. And the mother, the grandmother worshipped God of Iron. And every morning, the grandmother will go and pour libation on, on the God of Iron and will bath the baby. And the baby was now taken to be a, a, a devotee of the idol. Years after, when she was 20, that year she was 20 years old. She never knew that her grandmother did that. The demon spoke through her. That why are we disturbing them? It was her grandmother that handed her. Over. How can you explain it? Like a lawful captivity. Told them again about the lady I pray with that uh, this will even die. She died and passed out. We had to come and gather. We started praying. She came back to life. But when she came back to life, the demon was speaking that, that my wife is too much as you leave them alone. Do I know what happened? When the mother wanted to have her, the mother had crisis. And the mother was about to die. And they took the mother to the Afas, the Islamic scholar. Those ones that are like Abal is the press son. You know they are the greatest. They are the, those ones that are like Abal is the press son. So this one now, they took the woman there and the man did a lot of things so that the woman would not die with the baby and she was able to deliver. But they told her that this baby you are having will die when she's 20. 20 years made this guy in higher institution, 1995, 94. She was born in 1974. Then she she was one of my converts. And suddenly, four days before her birthday, her mother came. Her mother still remember. There are some of you, once in a while, you need to ask your mother some questions. Ask your father some questions. Daddy, I felt that you had something to tell me. Why did this thing happen in our family? Are there things you are supposed to, to tell her that you have not told us? Mama, remember she didn't tell. Mama came to school, gave her a gift. After a day before the birthday, Mama left because Mama thought that the demon has forgotten. Immediately, Mama left. On the day the girl was doing to attend birthday, all her friends were there. They were cooking. You know the way girls cook in the school. They sent her to school to go and do birthday and cook for for people. Then suddenly the celebrant stopped and passed out. Then the rush to come and come and start pray. Demon was the one telling us that we should leave them alone. That it is an agreement they are keeping. Can you stand up and pray? Because I discovered we don't have enough time. The Bible said that your agreement with death shall not stand. Yeah. Lift up your right hand before God. Say, Father, Father. any agreement the devil has over my life. I break the agreement by the blood of Jesus. I separate myself from ancestral bondage. Oh, you begin to pray. Every agreement the devil has over my life. Every agreement. Every agreement. In Jesus' name, pray. Upon Mount Zion, Obadiah 17, upon Mount Zion there shall be. Many of you have never thought about it. The Bible didn't say, upon Mount Zion there shall be holiness. Because there are power that will make holiness difficult. There are many of you that want to do right, but you cannot stop 
committing sin because there is a demon involved. That's why the Bible said, upon Moses there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. Because there are some things that will not go except you are delivered. There are some sin that you don't know how to have seen Christian. I've seen Christian. Christian doesn't know how to stop sexual sin. Pastor, I am no pastor. One day I was praying for one day, that pastor had a problem with his, with his wife. And as they were seated, the Lord, the Lord just spoke to me and said, Don't mind him. His wish is that his wife will die so that he can remind one of the guys in the boy. Because I know God speaks to me. And I said, Pastor, before God and my only three of us are here, do you wish this woman is dead so that he can remarry? Then he looked down and started crying. I mean, here he started crying. Secretly, he wished that his wife would die. He has already spotted two girls in the choir. So that, that when this woman died, one of them will be, will be the wife. So he was giving the woman attention at all. They were just always fighting. Then when I traced the problem, I discovered that it was the same thing with his father. His father was a celeb priest. You can see what I'm talking about. But you know that? I talked to them, they listen. After some years, the guest did finally die. So if he finally, within one year, they're about to marry somebody else. That's life. That's why if you don't play very well, things are happening. Captivity is possible and it can be legal. To all my people, if I want boy, this boy and Mikel started together playing football. You know the best footballers are not yet playing in Europe. They are Niger Bullet. So you know that. This boy was good. This boy, apart from being a footballer, this boy, if we, if we, if you give him this thing now, he will just look at it, open it, and he can repair it without going anywhere. He is naturally talented, but the guy, the guy was stinking. His life was stinking. You know, as a woman, they come around you, you could smell a curse. I smell a curse over this boy. And I said, young man, you are cursed. He said, Pastor, no, I'm not cursed. And I was saying, you know, when people start to see beside me, I tell just Holy Spirit, just show me what is the problem. And so the Holy Ghost told me that he still is somebody in a close blood relation. And he came under a curse. And I told him, did you sleep with somebody very close in the family? Then he looked down. The uncle that brought him to Lagos, the uncle, he was living with the uncle's wife. He never knew that the uncle's wife was a witch. So the cage is destined. Nika no mama waka Christian, we talk about Nika everywhere. A talented boy. His destiny red. I wanted to take him through deliverance. The demon wouldn't let him stay, so he left. I've not seen him again for more than 10 years. They follow him. There can be a legal captivity. If you trace your life and you see that there's something that was done wrong that's bringing this, you've got to repent. You've got to see. Many times if God reminded you something that happened a long, long time ago in your life, something you are not thinking about, Holy Ghost just brought it to you. God wanted to repent. He wanted you to do something about it. God reminded you about what he did wrong in the past. He has to retrace it. It was after that we started experiencing explosion. God even told him, confess some of this to your wife. And also what you heard about it. Confess to your wife. Even God told him, all the women you slept with before you are a Christian, confess to your wife. He told us that it was difficult because some of those women were his wife's best friends. He called the manager of something. You went, to, you, you went somewhere and you read your palms and you wonder why money is not entering your head. God may want you to repent of it and say, Lord, whatever I did in the past, I brought captivity to my hand. Why my money does not meet money in my hand? Why is it that my, my hand doesn't retain something big? Father, I repent. Go to my past and cut me off from it. Then we have what I call unlawful captivity. Unlawful bondage. Bondage that you don't deserve. May the enemy put it upon you. What you are suffering is not your making. It's not because you have committed sin. Do you know that it is possible to pay for another person's error? Do you know it is possible for Satan to die against you in the realm of the spirit and you are paying for what you didn't know nothing about? I read in the paper two weeks ago, a man in America that was released from prison, he was illegally, he was unlawfully in prison for 30 years. You read it? After 30 years, they now discovered that he didn't do what he has, what they say he did. Imagine 30 years out of somebody's life. 
suffering for what he didn't know nothing about. There are many of us like this here. We are unlawful captives. You've not done what they say you did, but Satan could up a lie against you and force it on you. I was in the Puyo prison last month. And uh, they have a wonderful church, bigger than your church. Not bigger in New Dino, but bigger in congregation. They have dynamic congregation. How many have been there? Not been there as a prisoner, but you go there to do whatever it is. You have been there before. I've been there, but I was there as a preacher. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. If this guy could play, you see, he better play drum now. Or else he can learn drum in the prison. I saw the play drum, please, as a fool. They have council of elders. They have elders. When I finished preaching, they said, on behalf of our senior pastor and our council of elders. And truly, I thought that those elders I saw were actually people that came from other churches. I saw people in their 80s, 70s. Since this, some of them have been in jail for 35 years. Then when I finished, I prayed for them and I said, God told me some of them will be released in a few days from now. And mercy will speak for them. On Monday, my phone rang. One of them called me because we went with our church bulletin. And he said, Pastor, I need to see you. I was just released today. We went on Saturday, they were released. Then he came. I can't say I was so that he can pray. Then he came to church. But I've not been able to talk with him before he gave his testimony in the church. So when I told my minister, they said we should hear the testimony for before he climbed. But before we should say, can promise it, the testimony session has come, he's already in front. You know what happened? Uh, five months ago, which is around April, you see, April, April ending, he was in the house, and he saw that with his wife. You, this woman gave, her, gave him three children. But they had a misunderstanding, and the wife got angry. Some of you don't know that your wife is an abandoned jail. You don't want to go in jail, but a man can be an abandoned jail. A man can be an abandoned jail. And most of the time, they have an appointment with death. And they always want to die at the peak of their job. As they had misunderstanding, this girl got angry. The husband thought that it was just one of those anger. She just went inside and carried sniper and drink. Drank it. But God doesn't know what is happening. She was already rolling on the ground. They don't have what to do, and she died. And the family of the husband or the wife said she ki he killed their daughter, and he was in jail for more than four months. Why they were still processing his uh, court court something was still going on. Then the judge asked, "Okay, if this guy said he didn't kill this woman, let them go and do autopsy." Autopsy came on, came came out on Monday. And that Monday, they took straight to the court and they discovered that he didn't touch this girl. He was released. Now, four months in the prison for what he didn't do. Stand up. Say, Father. Father. Every unlawful captivity in my life. Every in any area, I and my children are paying for what we didn't do. Divine pardon. I know what I'm saying. 
Because evil must stop with somebody. Somebody must not be able to pass evil to another generation. Are you getting me? Somebody must not be able to pass captivity to another generation. Because you can have a house full of money and you can still be in bondage. You have seen people that with money, there's an area of their life they can't tell to the open. And I can tell you many of them that have angry like that. You're going to ask God for divine pardon. Say, Father. Father. I receive divine pardon. Father. Shout it again. Captivity by disobedience. There can be captivity by disobedience. Let me give you an example. You will understand. I want to combine disobedience and ignorance. Because you can be captivity to an ignorant of you're just ignorant that there's a problem you need to address. A woman came with her husband to see me. And they said that when people come to visit them, when they have asked them, we didn't want we to go. They said they are hearing voices. They are, they are hearing noises and the, the wife too was running mad. These are big people. These are people that went to the whole, whole brand new film of healers. It's an escort. You should know that kind of life. Somebody that is so rich that he has a escort of his own. But there was no peace. And I went there, I told the man I would come. I asked the man questions and I discovered I didn't do this hand. But he has disobeyed God and I was ignorant of that disobedience. I look at that, I asked them questions. Do you have any any image in the house that look like demonic? Anything? They said no. They, then as I was moving around, the only was just question as we said, ask them, have you ever been to TB Joshua? He said, yes. That they used to go there and uh, they have the sticker place everywhere. They have the. And I said, go and remove every bit of it. Some things around you can invite bondage into your life. Some of you have used you have to buy something that brought demon into the house. As they remove the sticker, I will never. I've not even finished playing hand on the woman when she fell down and she started scattering everywhere. That was the end of the affliction. She was ignorant of it. They said, disobedient for you to worship man. And they were worshiping the man without knowing. They believed that when they carry the man's image, then there will be protection. Maybe they have invited demons into their family. The another one was a man of God. They have one, one child, and after that they couldn't give birth again. One day he came to see me, and I was up a prompt in the Holy Spirit, and said, somebody gave me a gift sometimes ago, and that gift is what the enemy used to enter your life with money. He said, no. He said, she said, nobody gave, gave him a gift. The Holy Ghost gave me, people understand, I said, is there anybody that used to be a friend to you, and suddenly changed their attitude? He said, there's somebody very close that used to be a blessing to them, and this person just suddenly hated them. And this is a pastor. And the Lord said to me, what was the last gift this woman gave you? She told me the woman gave her a cloth, which she sold. And I said, no, that's not all. That's another gift. I can't, because I know how God speaks to me. I've not got the full release. He said, no, but he said, I remember. The bed, the bed I'm using is bought by the... Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know what the bed means now? Where do you tie the bed? In the waist. And that's where the action is. I told him, go. We are bringing the belt and the clothes, and we burn the thing. As the thing was burning, you receive a test on the phone. So you have destroyed my property with you and me. Yes. I will make help. That month, the wife took it, and after that, they had three boys. 
Can you stand up for those? If you are here, you bought a stolen goods. There are something you bought very cheap in the past. And the Lord told me that that thing was, was gotten out of blood. Somebody shared another person's blood and they sold the property to you. That's what brought captivity. After this meeting, if God reminded you of any property in your family that is not comfortable in your spirit, please go and remove it. If there's anything you bought so cheap, they are selling iPhone for 300,000 and you bought it for 25,000 naira. Don't tell me that you, it was favor. It is a stolen goods. And the owner may have cost whoever is holding the phone. I don't know that someone is getting me here. Those of you that like to buy cheap, cheap things, be careful. You can be buying bondage without you knowing. But you're going to pray. Say, Father! Must know that 
destruction awaiting you. Whatever you are sowing today, your children may reap tomorrow. Church, this message needs to be sound clear. Our children may be paid for our crime. How many children of the rich actually become greater than their father? Few. Few. And you see the act, act of the days rising. You see the children that are supposed to carry the name of their parents, father than where the father carry it, becoming drug addicts. Going to school and not finish. After paying 230000 pounds nothing come out of it. Don't stop banging the devil alone. Is there any restitution? Is there any repentance? Lack of restitution can bring captivity because of how we treated a righteous. These are the things that Satan uses against us. We've got to be careful because whoever break the edge, serpent. Tell your husband when his eye handed it towards other people. Tell him, my dear, be tender the way you treat people. Life. We have seen people that used to be money now at the mercy of people that used to serve them. If God has privileged you, it's not because you are smart, it's because you are grace. Never ever use your position to subdue somebody's destiny. Don't let never, don't ever allow any destiny to die in your hand. Don't let another person's child destiny die in your hand. I tell you. Wherever I am today, I can trace it to the good my parents did, that my mother did. She will see other people's children that couldn't go to school. Now, our last one is around 40 now. And I'm the first out of the five. In my house, we could see count almost 10, 15 people that are being fed every day. My mother will collect the money from us to feed those children today. And she will tell us that that's how our whole Elena is old. She will just keep on making food for other people's children. Do you know that I've never lacked ever anywhere I go to? There is no country I enter that enters no wait for me. This, this region, I was in six countries, and in each country, people are waiting to help me. In fact, in when I was in Canada, almost almost as many families, even people I don't know, they were cooking food for me and my wife, and they were bringing it to the hotel. To the extent that things are going fresh fish, and then they have a foreign room, and I say, What am I going to the service? They say, Pastor, don't just worry. Then I remember my mother. One day I entered, I entered intro with my wife, and suddenly somebody came to carry us, and we came, she borrowed Kabu uh, Kabu. We know some Nigerian, no Kabu Kabu in London. So she knows the lady that was driving Kabu Kabu, brought the lady to come and carry us. And as we were going, I saw somebody, uh, 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 carry my name. Oh, you woman, pure white, carry my name, pass along, I kill you. I told the woman, I said, that's my name. I mean, I still know my name. I went to the man, I said, I'm sorry, which person? He said, no, one big man in Nigeria said, yeah, 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 his pastor friend is coming. That uh, Somebody asked me, one my member from Winner Chapel asked me, is he still advocate of Nigeria? He said, I mean, are you going on vacation? I said, yes. He said, what well, I just told him, no man that he has book. This will go down. You know all those messages been that long go. That nobody says like a presidential. I said I'm the one telling. So I told the woman, I said, sorry. Let me follow this woman. Why you can leave this woman? You follow the woman. Let's go. The woman I said, told the Kabuka woman. I said you can be going. I'll follow Pastor. Even in a straight line, people are competing to favor me. Friends, don't be wicked to most people. Now on my own, I now give my money, my mother more money to do what? To do more. Then the other day she just told me they are in church. She doesn't like the way they sell, uh, uh, they sell fresh refreshment to the children. They said some parents couldn't give their children money to buy all those things. And I asked how much is this per Sunday, and she told me. And I said, don't worry, don't tell anybody who I'll be sending the money. So for months now, I will send money to my mother, they will do all those things for the children. They said, ha, ah, you see the kind of prayer they are praying for me. They don't know. He said, just them, somebody said they should be feeding the children. I think so they pray for me. All this little, little act of kindness can terminate. Little, little act of unkindness 
things can bring. I don't know why I'm preaching this. This is not what I prepared. I've preached half of what I prepared, but I couldn't go beyond that. I stopped at that love for captivity. But this one, I'm telling you, somebody is here. Change your attitude towards the less privileged. Somebody that cannot pay you back this week, make him laugh. Somebody that cannot pay you back, that is helpless, make them laugh. You know what I discovered? I discovered that my children's school fees is a lot of money. And there are people around me that their children's school fees is 30,000 naira, 10,000 naira. There's a pastor in Osho State. The children's school fees just, just pee towards. So without asking me, I just asked for their number, I can't remember. And I was sending, I'll pay the school fees. Then I have other ones here, then I have another widow. I was paying it. Do you know what happened? I would do their own, even when one has not come for my own children. Do you know I've never needed to beg anybody for school fees? Even though I'm a full time pastor. All believers may not have the person of Jesus, but they keep the principles of Jesus. Many believers have the person of Jesus, but we don't keep his principles. Do you know why that God can never go down? Do you know why? Do you know why that can never go down? That God is feeding thousands and thousands of people. And let's say 20,000 people are working for that country. Hello? Aye. Can you hear me? Yes. Let's say 20,000 people are working for that country. And some of these people are like more than 10,000 Christians. Are you getting me? And some of them have five, seven, eight dependents. The father, every year my father is working. Please bless them. Don't let the company my father is working. Don't let this go down. Father, please bless my mother's work. God cannot bless their mother's work without blessing that unbeliever. Stand on your feet. Lastly, open your back with me to that John chapter 5, verse 14. Morning, you just said it's gonna ask you to pray. Those bondage will just disappear. Because God does not need to waste time when conditions are met. When things are right, the way we are praying, things are supposed to not happening. Because there's some act of evil. There's an accusation. And after what Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, see, you have been made well. See no more. Less worse thing than this. Upon you. Jesus knew that this man was a lawful captive. He was responsible for the sickness, for the affliction that he was going through. I like you to bow down your head. Before I go to prayer this morning, if you are under my voice this morning, close your eyes and search your heart. If you used to be a Christian and you passed with it, and you want to say, Jesus, I'm coming back home. I don't want this money to get in my life. You are the one I'm sending to this money. Number two, if you are not born again at all, you don't have the assurance of salvation. Number three, if you are under my voice, in your heart, you know it, that if Jesus comes now, you are not going anywhere. Before I pray the prayer of deliverance, the Bible said, if you don't give your life to Jesus Christ, you are not of ease. If you want deliverance, you must first buy be his child. If you are one of these people, can you put your right hand upon your chest? Search your heart. If you want to dedicate your life to Jesus, or you want to give that, just put your hand upon your chest and say after me. Say, Jesus, I am helpless without you. Have mercy upon me. I am tired of bondage. I offer you my life. I will dedicate my heart to you. Write my name in the book of life. Don't let captivity continue in my life. Save my soul in Jesus' mighty name. Now, if you pray that prayer, can you come and say, Let me lean upon you? Quickly come. Just come here, let me lean upon you. Before we do the prayer of deliverance, just stand there and I pray for you. We want to give your life to Jesus, we want to rededicate your life to Jesus. After this morning, if anybody call you and say, When are you born again? Which are you going to tell them? 28, 28 what? October. October 20. So you will not write it in your Bible. On the 28th day, I dedicate my life to Jesus. On the 28th day, I give my life to. After today, you are going to start passing.
and you know that you don't need to come out, but you know that God has been reminding you something about the past, maybe about the period, or as an unlawful captivity in your life, or as a captivity by ignorance, and you want Jesus to set you free. You raise up the two hands and I'll pray from here, and I'll be in touch, and the Lord will be glorified. And if somebody here, the flow of favor has been going on in your life. The Lord said that the favor you used to enjoy after this morning shall be restored. Amen. You used to enjoy so much favor, and that favor is reducing. And after this morning, the Lord said, the, 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 the favor that you enjoy will be increased again. Yeah. And that which area you used to enjoy favor, and that flow is going down. There will be a resolution of the spirit of favor yeah. in the name of Jesus. Like if you are one of those that want me to join my with you, without you coming out, just raise up the tongue wherever you are, and I pray. Thank 
salvation. For this reason, it's not manifested that I might destroy the works of the enemy. We tell the doctor's reports. We tell the doctor's reports. And we begin to talk to God.
Jesus has the priority of hand. Every hand that is sick, every hand that is impotent, every hand that doesn't retain details, I set this hand free in the name of Jesus. Any bondage in your hands, I want to make you an S champion. I want to make an S rich person. I pray the cost upon this hand. I liberate these hands and I set you free. I declare a divine release from all bondages. Any of your children that is having challenges anywhere they are in the world, before the end of 72 hours, may you hear good news from them.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Quickly, I would like us to package our offering this morning. And I'd like you to give with a mindset of believing God for greater things to happen around you. We just have two months to end the year, but there is something that can unlock your destiny, and that is the seed in your hands. Peter exercised this seed that we are talking about. He has thought all his life, and he decided, I won't end like this. Something has to change in my life. And the Bible said, when Jesus came, he handed over his boat to Jesus. And as soon as he handed over, it as good as he connect to the source of his blessing. Listen to me. There is a seed that you need to unlock destiny. And that is you discovering that this year you will not end an ordinary man. So I want you to bring up a seed that will make you to connect to the Almighty God in order for you to collect. There is something that belongs to you that this heart needs to release to you. So this morning, with great privilege, I would like you to rise on your feet and I would like you to package a seed that will bring down your abundance. There is an abundance that you need to step in. When Peter handed over his boat, there was something transformed that transformed his life, that transformed his being, that transformed everything about him to the, to the level where by those who were mocking him, laughing at him, they began to work for him. Listen to me. There is something that needs to unleash destiny to your life. And that is when you have the mindset that there is that can provoke heaven this morning. So I'd like you to pack it your seat this morning, even as we give our offering. Why? <laughs> glory, glory. Hallelujah. Can you raise that offering up? Lord, we thank you for the grace to give at your feet one more time. <laughs> Even as the little lad offered that with the parent gave to him. He said, I don't want to be broke. Neither do I want my parents to lack anymore. And as soon as he offered what they gave to him, the Bible said, the disciple carried to a basket to this young man's father's house. There was a great change. Therefore, I decree this morning by the grace of the God that we serve in this altar, I declare to you this hour in the name that is above every other name, whatever is called poverty end in your life today, it end in your family today, it end in your career today, in the name of Jesus, I decree into your life now. In the name that is above every other name, financial favor rests upon you. It rests on your children. It rests on your business. It rests on your career. It rests on your going out. It rests on your coming in. In the mighty name of Jesus.
Lord in my spirit because when we met on Friday for the vigil, sit down please, this was the word that the Lord God Almighty sent to us and those of us who were in the vigil will remember, he said let them go, let them go. The Bible says by the word of two or three witnesses a matter shall be confirmed. I declare to you that you have been set free this morning in Jesus name. Activity, whether lawful or lawful, you have been set free in Jesus' name. I have been set free in Jesus' name. May we never go into captivity again in Jesus' name. This morning we have our brethren in the house. They are members of our family. They come here every year from uh, Gideon's International. And the gentleman who is coming up to talk, even though I haven't told him, he and I know each other from industry almost 20 years ago. Wow. He will begin to remember now. We were in the telecommunications sector together. He was in government, I was in private sector. But the Lord has arrested us at different points. And today, Mr. John Pitt Antonio, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Church, good morning. God bless you. My name is John B. Antonio. I'm from Gideon's International. First, I want to thank the Almighty God for the privilege to be your beast and to have enjoyed the worship this morning and also the prayer from the pastor. I'm very grateful to also the pastor because additionally in absentia is not here. He's also my pastor. He's also my big brother and his lovely wife, uh, Bola Adifara Singh, Sister Bola. I also want to thank all of you, members of the church, for supporting the pastor and for supporting the work of God. I have said I'm from the Gideons International, we are not a church. Gideons International is not a church, we are the leg of the church, while you are the body. We go to places where you and I cannot go. Amen. Amen. The Gideons International were the Bible people who distribute Bibles. We don't sell our Bibles, we give them and place them in specific places. Like this one, we place in hotels all over the world. And this one, we give to people in hospitals, it's white. We give it to hospitals. And this one we give to students, students and academic people. Praise the Lord. Amen. The Gideons was established as far back as over so many years ago, 119 years old. And it was founded in America. It came into Nigeria in 1964. And since the past 119 years, we have distributed over 2 million Bibles across the world. Amen. And in Nigeria, we have done 66 million Bibles since 1964. And in our own Lagos chapter, since May this year, we have distributed 18,000 Bibles like this. Amen. And we want to do more. That's why I'm here. We want to do more. I'm here for two reasons. We need your support, your financial support, so that we can do more. We need to do another 20,000 Bibles between now and May next year. We start our year in May, and we end the following May. Praise the Lord. So we need your support, your financial support. That's number one. Number two, we need men and their wives. We need men across the world where are only 169,000 Gideons. In my Lagos chapter, we are about 20. We are doing the work of hundreds of people. And we need more men and their wives to come and join us. Praise the Lord. So we are going to, we are not going to raise money here. I will wait outside the church so as not to take your time. I will stand outside in the foyer. Those who would like to contribute, we are leaving your check. That's the account number on the screen, Gideon's International, Zenith Bank. 
we can take any amount. The smallest Bible here is about a thousand naira. So a minimum of a thousand. If you want to sow ten thousand, you want to sow a hundred thousand, you want to sow one million, please feel free. See it as a seed. Amen? And tie it to something you are expecting God to give to you before December. Because God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In addition, we have certain programs that we do. Like if you are doing your birthday, or you are doing your fun a funeral of your family or relative, or you are dedicating something, we you don't mind if you want to sow a seed, we call it a, a Bible, you sow a Bible. You dedicate a Bible to that event. And if you are have a hospital, you want us to come, we will put Bibles in your hospital. If you have a hotel, we will put Bibles in your hotel. Thank you and God bless you richly. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So those that want to see uh, Mr. Antonio after the service, he will be at the foyer. Also, those that want to uh, do an electronic transfer, you have the bank uh, information. And then those that want to volunteer to distribute Bibles, you can also see him so that he will furnish you with the information. The Lord bless you as you do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Jesus said, on the day that I will see you, I will ask you, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was naked, did you clothe me? When I was in prison, did you visit me? And the Bible says, many will ask, Savior, when were you hungry? When were you naked? When were you in prison? And he replied and said, in so far as you did it to any one of these my creatures, any one of this my creation, you did the same to me. So it is a divine injunction from the Savior himself that we minister to the less privileged. Now, I don't have to say much about it because the man of God treated the subject during his ministration. So you've been given an envelope, and if you haven't, you can wave, let the ushers give you one. Give towards the welfare of the less privileged in our midst. How many of us in church here know that we have almost a hundred children that Canaan Land sponsors in primary nursery and primary school? How many of us are aware of this? Every year, their uniforms, their shoes, their bags, their books, we are buying their sporting equipment now because they are about to have it house sports. We paint the buildings in the school. We organize programs for the teachers. Put your hands together for the Lord now. This is what Jesus asked us to do. We are not doing it to show off to any man. This is the work that Christ has commended us to do. And how many of us know that since August, we have started a soup kitchen in a village called Aro, I think it's Aro Town, Aro Village in Jakarta. How many of us are aware? And every Sunday we feed hundreds of people in Aro Town. We feed them in uh, uh, Marwa by this Hausa colony on the way back to VI here every weekend. So these are some of the things that this money goes towards. I want you to give generously and know that where you cannot go to, your money will go to and minister to these people and the Lord will bless you richly as you do so in Jesus' name. The ushers are passing the envelopes around. Take an envelope, put in your offering and they'll collect it from you. We're getting ready to round up the year in a powerful way. You know, we're getting into November in a few days now. So I'm happy to announce to you that in the first week of November, we're going to go on a fast with prayer. How many of us are excited? How many of us are excited? We're going to be praying and fasting for the first six days in November, from the first to the sixth. So we will start on Thursday the first, and we will go through to Tuesday the sixth, and then we will round it up with the communion meal 
on Tuesday. So I want you to get yourselves ready. The church will contact you and let you know the information, the details of what we're going to do. We're going to be praying. We're going to be fasting as well. So of course there will be meetings here in church. And then we will also have prayer chains that we will observe in our different homes. How many of us do not receive any information from church? Just wave your hand. You've never received uh, an SMS tagged Canaan Land, you know, a bulk message. Ushers, can you please take notice? I have somebody in the middle here. Is there anybody else? Just wave your hand where you are so the ushers can give you a form to fill. Is there anybody else? I have my brother here as well. I have a few people on that side. Please just keep waving until the ushers put a form in your hand. Until they put a form in your hand. Please fill that form. That form allows us to keep you in our database and we can send messages to you to inform you about programs in the church and all the vital information that you should have. Uh, there's still some hands in front here. There's still some hands in front here, please. Even if we don't have forms anymore, just get plain sheets of paper and let them write their details, please. Let's do that quickly. God bless you. Now there's some special people in our midst that we want to welcome this morning. And if today is your first time of worshipping with us in Canaan land, can you just wave your hand? Can you wave your hand wherever you are? God bless you. God bless you. You are welcome. We love you. You are answers to our prayer. Can you rise to our feet, to your feet where you are? Rise to your feet. God bless you. Canaan land, let's put our hands together for the Lord and let's welcome them. Go up to them. Tell them we love you. Thank you for coming. We know you had many places to worship today and we thank God that you chose to come here and we know from what we have jointly experienced that your life will never be the same again because you chose to worship here today. God bless you. Keep standing. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. I want you to look towards the man at the door there. Can you see the hand that's waving? Just take your bag and your Bible, whatever you brought with you and go towards him. We have a reception for you. Let's keep clapping in and out. We have a special reception for you just to show you how special you are. We want to tell you more about the church and also take information from you so we can pray for you and stay in touch with you. God bless you richly. You're welcome in Jesus' name. Canaan Land Club now. Clap now. God bless you. Have you been blessed in today's service? Let's rise on our feet even as we bring the service to a close. Remember, like we said, 1st to 6th of November will be on a fast with prayer. The details will come to us. I want you to go ahead and declare the way you want this week to work out. Knowing now, even the more that you have been set free from everything that held you down in the past. Go ahead and speak into your week. The Bible says we are those that speak a thing that be not into existence. We decree a thing and it's established. We speak a thing and it comes to pass. Go ahead and declare it to your week now. Father, I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that your favor surrounds me like a shield this week. Help is abundantly available to me. Everywhere I go, I shall receive a warm reception. Where I have been turned away before now, they will come in search of me. Oh, my trade shall receive much custom even this week in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I will go forth expectant in the morning and every evening I shall return bearing a significant harvest with me. Father, I will labor little this week and I will harvest plenty. Your favor shall set upon me. Helpers shall be raised for me. There shall be joy and peace surrounding me everywhere I go and even with my family and my loved ones. No evil report shall be given concerning me. No harm will come near me or anyone, Lord Father, that is close to me. All that shall be said of me shall be see what the Lord has done. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord 
forever and ever. Amen. Now personalize that second part. Say, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go forth and do mightily this week. God bless you. There's a lost and found bunch of keys. You can see the ushers. Anyone's looking for their keys.